Hey art nerds, so last week we talked about the Pentel Sharp HD and that reminded me of the Pentel Multi 8. So today we're taking a look at the Pentel Multi 8. So I have two versions of this pencil but they basically do the same thing. We're going to take a look at both today. This is an 8 color automatic pencil. It uses 2 millimeter specialty leads and refills are available. You can get the clear body one on Amazon with the refills for around $22.05. That is a big old ouch. You can get the gray body for $31.11 on Amazon. That's an even bigger ouch. And you can get the refills for $10.49 on Amazon. But you may be able to find them in your favorite art supply store like Michael's and they're probably going to be a lot cheaper there. I got the gray body pencil while I was in Japan and I picked up the clear body pencil a really long time ago. They have basically the same colors but not quite the same colors so it may be worth your while to seek out what you're specifically looking for and the packaging on these is very different so for the gray body one it comes with a plastic sleeve and a foam insert it's simple and elegant but it takes up a lot of space and it creates more waste if you are the type who throws away your packaging this is in both English and Japanese so the instructions are in both and it seems like it's more of a Japanese release than an English release but you can get it on English Amazon. The pencil inside is gray clear silver and black and I think it looks a little classier than the clear body one and I needed to use a knife to get it open so I could get inside the packaging and uh, just slip that foam out like so and it's yeah like I said it's pretty elegantly designed. So this version is the checking pencil and what that means is it's got non-photo blue and it's got a non-reproducible pink that are useful when making notes on photocopies. It can also be useful when sketching because when you scan, theoretically the way it used to be, scanners and photocopiers were not sensitive enough to pick up those specific blues and yellows so people would use those for their underdrawings. These days, scanners are way more sophisticated and can pick up those colors, but they are super easy to drop using a program like Photoshop. So the pencil itself has no real grip, but it does have some grooves to help with grip towards the front of the pencil. I would not say this is a pencil really designed for long-term sketching or long-term use in a session. This is a knock style or a clutch style pencil, which means you push the back, the lead basically free falls forward, and then friction catches it at the front. So you want to have your hand underneath the lead when you're extending the lead because otherwise it'll drop on the floor and break. And those leads are pretty expensive. The Pentel 8 also only takes Pentel 8 leads, which means you can't use like Stanford turquoise leads or your favorite graphite leads in these pencils, which is kind of a womp womp. So this is the PH802 model, which is designed for checking use. And it includes a Daiso non-copy pink and a PPC non-copy light blue. So it could be an ideal clutch style lead holder for artists. And this thing is really neat. I wish Pentel would release a seven millimeter and a five millimeter multi eight mechanical pencil as well. In many of my other artist reviews mechanical pencil videos, I've talked about wanting just such a thing. If you guys know of one, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to check it out. I've been scoping them out on Amazon as well, and I haven't had a whole lot of luck in finding one. So these are the care instructions. I'm not going to go through them totally with you guys. They're pretty handy to have. If you pause the video in a couple of seconds, I have a blown up close up view of it in case you have one of these and you don't know how to operate it. I mean, we've all been the recipients of well-loved and somewhat abused art supplies that were given to us from somebody else. It holds eight different LEDs and Pentel recommends that you only use their LEDs. And realignment is simple. Now you're going to need to realign your pencil probably because if you try to retract it and turn it at the same time and the lead isn't all the way back there, it's going to kind of put it out of kilter. So you just extend the lead and adjust the arrow on top to match the notch. 
and then put the lead back into the body and that should fix it. The selector, the lead color selector, which is, uh, so you have this clip, right? And you see you have this window in the clip. That's your lead color selector for this thing. It moves with a ratcheting movement. So just expect that. You do need to put a little bit of force in it, but it shouldn't be too much. And the PPC blue is different in both pencils. The clear one has a much lighter lead. So this is the version that's more common in the US. You may see it in a Michaels on the Pentel display. You can also see that this one has a metal collar, whereas the other one has a plastic collar. This one is marketed more for like coloring use, like coloring books and highlighting and marking up Bibles. The other one is marketed more for like making corrections or checking things, ma making notes. I honestly prefer the other one. I think it's a little more stylish and I like the colors in it a little bit better. It feels more geared towards my own personal use. Now, other than the leads and the look of the pencil, there's not a lot different with these. So in the regard of treating it like a color pencil, it's kind of similar to the Zebra Sensations mechanical pencils. They're like mechanical coloring pencils. I've reviewed them in the past and I will link them down in the descriptions or to the INC color points, which I've also reviewed in the past. And if you want a fresh point on these, if you want like a new sharp point, you're gonna need a lead pointer, which Pentel recommends anyway. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two Multi-8s. Functionally, they're the same thing. Um, there is another Multi-8 as well that includes a mechanical pencil, pencil, some LEDs, like the colored LEDs, and then a couple of pins. And I think that one's pretty neat as well. I'm just all about like these multi-use tools, drawing, sketching, and stationary tools, so that I only have to bring one thing. It's like my dream. And I know in Japan you can like customize your own, but the stationary stores I hit up didn't have the ones where you can do the mechanical pencil with different colored LEDs. So, womp. But if you guys know anywhere online that delivers to the US that lets you select your own, I would love to hear from it. So they function the same way. They have the same rationing mechanism. They have the same clutch at the front. You need to handle the LEDs the same way. Once you get the hang of them, they're not that finicky, but when you're first using them, they are definitely finicky and take some getting used to. And I would not recommend these for younger artists. Like anybody under the age of 10 would not recommend these. I wouldn't recommend them if you're a Butterfingers like me, because if you drop them and the lead breaks, you've wasted a bunch of lead. And these things only take the multi-8 refills, so you can't just refill it with whatever you like. So these are, like I said, basically the same, but some of the colors inside are different. And I'm gonna do a swatch test in a little bit just to show you. The most striking difference is that in the Japanese version, you get a non-photo blue and you get a non-reproducible pink. Whereas in the American version, you do get a pink and a blue, but they're different shades and they're really more designed for coloring. But the LEDs handle basically the same as well. Now, the PH803 is the one I was just talking about. It includes two pens and graphite, and I have that link down in the description below.
So Pintel recommends that you only refill these with multi-8 refills. They have a metal cap at the back and they're cut to a specific size to fit inside this thing. The metal cap probably helps reduce breakage. And uh, the multi, since we're talking about the multi-8 refills anyway, I will show you guys what they actually look like. And they are a little bit easier to find, believe it or not. So the pack comes with eight different colors and the multi-8 containers are smaller than your regular small Pentel lead containers. And each one contains just two refills. So you gotta make these count, D don't just break them. This package contains red, blue, yellow, brown, green, orange, a light blue, and pink, and it corresponds with the US release of this pencil. I haven't been able to find multi-8 packs for the Japanese release that includes the non-reproducible blue and non-reproducible pink, which is kind of a shame because that's what I'm the most excited about. These things come blister pack and it's a little bit annoying because it's like eight refills of a specific lead. I'm probably gonna rubber band mine all together and shove them in a drawer somewhere, but like a little plastic box that held all eight or a box with like, I don't know, little flip top lids or something where it's all in one place might be a little bit more handy. I guess if you use certain colors of your multi eight all the time, it's easier to just carry around a couple of refills. And you guys can see the metal caps on the back of the refills. Now, I am sure there are some innovative, creative, handy people who've got lots of time on their hands who totally make their own multi-8 refills with their favorite graphite and favorite colored leads and that's pretty cool but that is not me <laughs> that is probably not most of the people watching this video so while I, I acknowledge that it can conceivably be done and it's probably not that difficult most of us are not gonna do it so at the top is a pack of pentel red refill leads i think this is for the 0.7 millimeter and below is for the multi-8 and you guys can see that the multi-8 looks similar but is much smaller and then here are all eight colors for the u.s release refill pack now since we have all these colors we're going to swatch both pencils. I'm going to start with the Japanese release checking pen and then we'll move on to the US release coloring pen. And if you read the reviews on Amazon, people really do like it for coloring. Now me, I feel a little limited by eight colors. I'd like more colors than eight colors and it'd be cool if this is aimed as a coloring tool, if Pentel released other refill colors. Um, but, you know, to each their own, I guess it's good travel coloring. So the Daiso non-copy, it looks red, but it's pink. And there's no snapping with the Japanese leads. They are soft, they're fairly creamy. They're not the softest leads I've ever used. I wouldn't want to color with these for a long period of time, but honestly, I wouldn't mind sketching with these. And the color order between the two pens is different. The colors um, are also different. So what I'm doing is I'm swatching in order on the, on the mechanical pencil itself. And I'm moving my swatches so we can compare the colors. So that kind of explains why I'm doing it the way I'm doing is I'm just ratcheting along the pencil and lining it up with the corresponding color. So there are several different colors. The blues are different, both of the blues, and we do have some snappages with the American release. I don't know if it's me, if it's the pencil, or if it's the leads, but there are some snapping. Um, the pinks are different, the greens are different, the red's a little bit different, but not like noticeably different. And you can really see that clutch style mechanism. It's a pretty simple mechanism. It's really easy to clean. So if it does jam up in the pencil, you should be able to fix it. Uh, but they do include instructions on how to correct jams. So next we're gonna test erasability. I also wanna point out that the Japanese pencil has the colors labeled on the pencil itself. The US one does not. 
The leads are fairly soft. They could potentially be blendable if you wish to use this for coloring. The pink snapped with very little pressure in the US pencil. These are too finicky to give to younger children, but older kids might get the hang of it quick. I would not recommend this for school use because if you drop this pencil on a hard surface, the lead will probably snap. And for erasing, neither really erase. It's probably not great for sketching, but it might be good for class demonstration. Like, I don't know about my fellow art teachers, but when I'm doing class demonstrations, I use red and blue and I'm not really relying on being able to erase. So this could be good for class demos. So we're going to sketch this using the PPC blue, which is the non-photo blue. Um, it's not overly bulky for an eight color clutch pencil. Pentel's really done a good job kind of condensing space here. The lead dulls quickly. You really need a lead pointer with this one. And once the lead gets dull, it's very difficult to do finer details. Again, this doesn't erase easily. So if you enjoy the ability to correct your mistakes, this might not be a great fit for your sketching needs. Now, like I said, there isn't really a grip on this thing. There's some grooves in it just to kind of keep it from slipping in your hand, but there's no give, there's no real comfort. But if you're used to lead clutch pencils, those are usually metal and <laughs> really tough on the hands and fairly heavy. So this is more forgiving than those and it's more comfortable than those and it's definitely lighter than those and you get more colors, but those are less finicky about what brands they take. I bet some of those clutch pencils would even take a Pentel Multi 8 lead. I guess that's something we're going to have to experiment with a little bit later on. Now, I'm not allowed to put graphite in this thing because the Pentel Multi 8 only takes Pentel Multi 8 leads. So I can't just use my favorite graphite lead in this, which is kind of a bummer. So for the rest of this, we're just going to ink on top of it. And I'm using one of my favorite, not water safe inking pins, the Kuratake Fudego Kochi. And I've talked about it on this channel so many times. And all I'm really looking to see with this is, does the lead, is the lead super waxy? Does it make the ink resist? Does the ink take longer to dry? Is the ink more likely to smear? on top of this lead, things like that. And that's why I went with a brush pin I use all the time, I'm super familiar with, I know how it works. And there were no issues with inking. So if you are using this for sketching, maybe for sketching larger things or for class demo, you can ink on top of it if you want to.
Now, didn't she turn out cute? I've got all sorts of drawing tutorials if you guys think she's cute and you want to learn how to draw like this. So make sure you stick around, hit subscribe, and click the bell notification so it'll let you know when this channel has updated. So that was a whole lot of talking, but we still got to talk about the verdict. What do I think of the Multi-8? It's definitely more interesting than your average lead holder, but the fact that you have to use Pentel Multi-8 lead is quite limiting and it may be difficult to find. You may prefer to use your favorite brand, or you may even wish to put graphite leads in rather than colored leads. For folks who like to work large, this could be a great addition to your toolkit, although it's not recommended for school use. For coloring, I find the range fairly limiting and would not recommend it in most instances, particularly not over the zebra sensations, which, as I mentioned, I've reviewed here on this channel and it does come in a wider range of colors, although they are all individual mechanical pencils, so you'd be hauling a whole bunch of them I guess to church. I feel like that, like when I was reading the reviews, that's the vibe I got is like, this is aimed for people to color in their Bibles in church, which growing up, I would not have been allowed to do that, but you do you. Maybe it works for you. So anyway, that was my review of the Pentel Multi-8 pencil. I think it's really cool. There's some changes I'd personally love to see that would make it even cooler, but hey, I'm just one person and I'm pretty sure Pentel doesn't listen to me. I hope you guys found this review to be helpful, useful, and informative. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit like. That helps me out a lot. And consider subscribing for more art supply reviews here on this channel. I've had such a good time reviewing these mechanical pencils with you guys. I hope you guys will check out the playlist and let me know what you think. Have a wonderful day, guys.